I am Jim Serace, and this is the Grind Spiritual Sunday. The message today is, why is down, down, and up, up? When we say words like, I'm down, it means that I'm not feeling so good. Or if we say that I'm up, it means that, hey, we're, we're feeling positive. Or we hear things like, hey, don't lay down on the job, which is a negative thing. Or get up, which is a positive thing. Look up, that's positive. Looking down is being dour and lugubrious. So, and also, what about um, hell and heaven? Uh, we always say hell is down and heaven is up. Is heaven really up and hell really down? Nah, not really. It's kind of just in the atmosphere. I really think that down gets a bad rap. Let me explain. As I look at my life, I've been on top of the mountain and I've been in the valley. And everybody likes to be on top of the mountain and I do too, but... As I look at my life, I've learned so much more in the valley. There's been so much more impact in the valley than ever when I was on top of the mountain. There's more change that happens in our downtimes in our lives than in our uptime. And the reality of it is, is that the, the change and the impact that happens in the valley in the midst of adversity allows us in our life to move to a higher level and to be able to maintain that higher level. Sadly, though, most people, when they're in the valley, when they're in the midst of adversity and troubling times, is they just look to the top of the mountain and their gaze is affixed on, and wishing that they were there rather than, as I tell our people many times, is look for the treasure that's buried in the valley. Look for the treasure. Look for what it is that you need to grab from that moment in order to be have the elevation that you want and not only have the elevation that you want to but to maintain that elevation they've done many many studies on lottery winners and they looked at their lives five years later after they won the lottery and five years later most of them were in a worse off condition than what they were before they won the lottery and the reason for that is is that they didn't earn it they didn't have what it took to hold the more. We all want more, but do we have what it takes to hold the more? And so when we're in the valley, if we don't grab what it is that God is trying to give us, you know, we're, we're going to be unable to get that elevation. And even if we do, we'll be unable to maintain it and we'll go back. You know, I've never played a, a, a video game, uh, and but I've watched my grandchildren. And when I watch them, and typically in most video games is you have different levels. You start level one, but there's something you have to do on level one in order to get to level two. Either you got to uh, kill some kind of monster or you, you need to grab a coin or a weapon or something. And if you don't get what you're supposed to get or do on level one, you don't get to level two. You got to start all over again. So that's what happens so many times in people's lives is that they're, when they're in the midst of adversity, when they're in the midst of a storm, uh, they, they, they don't get what they need to get in order to get to the level that they want to get to. And a lot of people, when, when they finally, you know, get out of their adversity and they move to a higher place, they feel like, oh, that's where the Lord is. Thank you, God. Well, God was in the valley with you. Jesus is in the valley with you. God knows what's up. He didn't get busy in Mozambique and just take his eyes off of you and, and say, oh, whoops, forgot all about uh, Joe or Mary or whatever. No, the Lord is with you in the valley. He wants to teach you something. And that's something that he teaches you, that he wants to implant into your person, into your soul will give you the elevation that you so desire, better yet that God so desires for you to have a more abundant life. I often tell our, our people, uh, you know, I, I challenge them with, with a, a three-part prayer. And I say, look, whether you believe in God or not, whether you believe in prayer or not, or the impact of prayer, uh, you know, j just try this out. Three-part prayer. The first part is just thank the Lord for all the blessings you have in your life this day. Second part, ask him for more. Third part, most important part, third part, ask him to help you be trustworthy to hold the more. Trustworthy to hold the more. 
Jesus is with us in the valley on top of the mountain. The Lord is always trying to teach us, always trying to breathe into us what we need in order to reach higher elevations, higher places of influence, in order to be on top of the mountain, but have what we need in order to maintain our level. Let me read for you. It's uh, Psalm 139, one of my favorite psalms, and I'll close with this. This is what the psalmist wrote. He's speaking to the Lord. You have searched me, O Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit, you know when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me, your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. Wow, what a powerful word. It means that the Lord is with us wherever we're at and wherever we're at. He desires, he desires that we walk in the fullness of the destiny that he breathed in us, which is greatness. I believe the Lord breathed greatness in every single one of us, but we have to look for him in every moment and he will lead us. He will guide us. And the word of God says that Whatever is meant for trouble for us or evil for us, God will turn to good. It says that God works out everything to the good of those who love the Lord, who've been called according to his purpose. Everything to our good. Look for the Lord. Look for the treasure buried in the valley. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May the Lord lead and guide you this day and every day, all the days of your life. In Jesus' name. Subscribe today at simonarius.net.